If you enjoyed the channel and our video content and would like to support us, you can do this in a couple of ways. You can sign up to our Patreon site which is a monthly subscription to one of our four tiers, each giving you something different from early access interviews up to exclusive unseen footage. There's also the option of a one-off donation via PayPal which allows you the option to donate an amount of your choice. Both options really help to keep this channel going and to continue putting out regular content for you good folk. So please take a look at aircurrentreview.tv forward slash donate and I thank you in advance. Thank you and enjoy. Can you maybe talk us through a debrief, a brief and a debrief in the F-15 and how would you like relate it to what you're currently doing uh, in business now? Well, um, you know, I started a company 27 years ago called Afterburner. And I started that company because the frameworks that I learned growing up learning to fly a fighter and then the frameworks that I saw the squadron and even the wing use to survive, thrive and dominate in the sky were repeatable frameworks that I thought I could use when I was playing baseball, uh, but even more importantly, when I was working in corporate America. And I realized it was a powerful model, performance model and a simple model because that simplicity would beat the complexity of combat. And I realized it was an accelerant. It could accelerate not only individuals and small teams, but entire enterprises. And most companies, especially large enterprises, publicly traded companies, really struggle with alignment and execution. I mean, they just really struggle oh, really? with it. And I saw these frameworks that I learned uh, in the Air Force uh, and I saw how high of a level we were executing in a really inefficient enterprise, the U.S. government. I thought it was amazing. You know, how could they find these pockets of unbelievable excellence in this big, giant enterprise called the government of the United States? So I decided to make a career out of that, wrote a lot of books about it and teach corporations around the world, 26 countries. I think we've trained over two and a half million people. Wow. The rigors uh, and the sim simple frameworks that I learned as a fighter pilot and we apply them to business. The business model is called Flawless Execution. And it's the title of one of the books that I've wrote. Uh, but the briefing and the debriefing are cornerstone tenets in our model, which is plan brief, execute debrief in a cycle. So think Boyd's OODA loop, but this is a little bit differently. Planning using six steps, briefing right before you go fly, last step of alignment and accountability, executing the pre-brief plan in a task-saturated environment, and most importantly, debriefing immediately following. Mm -hmm. And the debriefing must be like the debriefings we had in the Air Force. They have to be a psychologically safe environment so the brand new lieutenant or the one star general can freely admit their errors in the open without the fear of reprimand or anything else to get the team better. And we rarely see that in corporations. So I learned that process and realized that would be a powerful business model. So how does a briefing and debriefing the F-15 world work? Well, the briefing was amazing. Everything that we do flying jets is very standardized, so it's scalable. Another lesson for businesses. So the briefing format was very scalable. We learned that, hey, when you first walk in, you're always on time. And the door closes right when the brief starts. And if you're late, you don't fly that day. You're left outside the room. Makes a big impression because if the briefing starts late or is sloppy and we step late and we taxi late and we take off late, then we are irrelevant. I mean, absolutely irrelevant, right? So that made a big impression on me as well. So briefings always start on time. They're never late. And if not, you don't participate. So sloppy briefing, sloppy execution. Mm -hmm. So the briefings were tight and we used to practice them. And the best flight leads were some of the best briefers because they clearly laid out the plan. So the briefing would start with some motherhood and, and uh, you know, here's the weather today. Here's our threats today. You know, here's how we're going to start ta taxi takeoff and RTB. Uh, if it was outside of our normal squadron standards, if not, all the flight lead had to say is STTO, start takeoff and, and, and RTB are going to be standard. Hmm. Um, we always would brief the emergencies in case there were any particular highlights. And we always, always briefed an ejection and rest cap. Because if, you're, if you've ever been in that situation, and I have, uh, where somebody's ejecting and you're providing rest cap, which I've done before, uh, you know, there's a lot of adrenaline flowing when you see one of your buddies blow up next to you. Uh, so you better have this down 
uh, as rope memory. So we always briefed the ejection and the rest cap procedures in a briefing. And then the flight lead would get into the actual tactics that we're going to employ today. So today we're going against uh, an unknown number of bandits, and we know the bandits are going to be, you know, F-18s simulating uh, flankers and floggers, or flankers and fulcrums. And here are the way we know these jets are going to be loaded out, A-10 long burns against our AMRAMs. Here are the tactics we're going to employ, and we usually tied it to some sort of real-world scenario. Uh, something was happening in the world. So we're going to take off from this base over here. We're going to do a combat air patrol situation over this area. This is our lane of responsibility. And then we get into the specific tactics. And the flight lead would brief everything from how we're going to communicate, how we're going to commit on the bandits, uh, when we're going to say we're offensive, neutral, or defensive, whether we're going to stick into the fight, we're going to we're going to notch or, or, or abort, come back in. You know, there are all these different things that we would go through. And then the briefing would end and then we would step to the jet. And the briefing really stuck, struck me because, you know, when you ask any high performance person, and I've written a bunch of books on organizational execution. So I started interviewing athletes and business people, you know, some of the top CEOs, famous CEOs that we've all heard of. And when I started asking these high performance individuals, how they execute I got a bunch of different answers but when you ask a fighter pilot how do you execute the mission they look at you almost stunned they go well i execute the pre-brief plan i execute mm -hmm. the brief i mean i know what i'm going to execute because we briefed everything in minute detail i even know what i'm going to do if things go wrong mm -hmm. it's been briefed so that made a big impression on me and and you know the execution phase of being a fighter pilot is bookended with a great brief, the preparatory step to execution, the last step of alignment and accountability, and then more importantly, the debrief in a nameless, rankless environment where we deconstruct everything that happened because rarely does this ever happen like we say it's gonna happen. So the briefing and the actual debrief is where we close gaps, the gaps between the expectation, the briefing based on real combat or the training scenario we just went through. So the debriefing, the purpose of that is to get our expectation for the next mission closer to reality. We're trying to close mm -hmm. execution gaps. And that's the purpose of the debrief. So when the debrief is over, we take those lessons learned, we publish them to other squadron members so they don't make the same mistakes we did when they step out the very next 30 minutes, the next hour, the next day on a mission. So they execute at a much higher level based on the lessons you and I just learned on today's sortie.